All right, next we're going to talk about uh, characteristics of polynomials. And so characteristics are just different things that you can see about their graphs. And then polynomials are equations that have lots of different exponents in them. So here's the example we have. Um, f of x equals negative x to the fourth plus x to the third plus 2x squared. And first we're going to go ahead and find the intercepts. So if you guys um, have a calculator at home, go ahead and try graphing this one. So here is what the graph looks like to start. It's a little bit hard to see exactly what's going on because it's so zoomed out. So what I'm going to do is adjust my window, and if I were to like cut this in half and half for my x min and max, make it negative 5 and 5, then I could still see everything that's going on. And if I did the same for the y um, and kept that down half, then I'd still be able to see what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and change my x min and max to negative 5 and 5 instead of negative 10 and 10. Um, and then my y min and max, I went ahead and changed to negative 3 and positive 3. Um, just because all that stuff is pretty spaced out and I want to see, or what I mean is it's compressed and I want to space it out so I can actually see what's going on there. So when you change your window to that stuff, then your graph looks like this and it's much easier to tell exactly what's going on. So if you recall, to find x-intercepts, we're going to do second trace, option number two to find the zeros of the graph. And for y-intercepts, we're going to do second trace, option number one. And we're going to plug in x equals zero to find the y-intercepts of the graph. So here is my first x-intercept. I did second trace, option number two. I did my left bound and right bound, left bound down here, right bound up there. And then I found my first x-intercept is negative one, zero. So for my x's, I have negative 1, 0. Again, anytime we're looking for intercepts, that's a coordinate, an x and a y. And so I'm going to write it like a point. All right, next, the one in the middle is hard to find um, on the calculator because you can't do left bound and right bound because your left bound and your right bound are actually both above the x-axis. And so your calculator will come up with an error if you try to do that. So this one just required a little bit of, um, of thinking through and being logical. So when I looked at this um, on my calculator, I could see it looked to me like that point was at the origin, that the x was 0 when the y was 0. And so what I did is I actually used second trace option number one, and I checked to make sure that when I plugged in zero for x, I got zero for y. And that tells me two things. First, it tells me that the x-intercept is zero because the x is zero when y is zero, and when y is zero, that's an x-intercept. But it also tells me the y-intercept because the y-intercept uh, happens when the x value is zero. So this number kind of qualifies for both of those. So for x-intercepts, we have 0, 0, and then for y-intercept, we also have 0, 0. And then we have one more 0 of the graph. Again, second trace option number 2, left bound, right bound, and when I do that, I find that that point is 2, 0. All right, the next thing we're going to do is find the local maximums and minimums. So we'll find the minimum by doing second trace option number three. And we'll find the max by doing second trace number four. So first I did the first little maximum, second trace number four, left bound, right bound, um, and I got the point negative 0.693, uh, positive 0.397. So I'm just rounding those numbers, cutting it off after the two, the two is followed by a nine, so it rounds it up to three. All right, next I did the, um, the minimum that's there, so second trace number three, and I did left bound and right bound. Um, and I got these interesting numbers here, and what you'll notice is that each of them has an E. And I can't remember if we've talked about this or not, but that E means it's times 10 
um, to whatever that power is. So the first one, the x-coordinate is 2.5504 times 10 to the negative seventh power. And the times 10 to the negative seventh power tells you to take your decimal and move it um, seven places to the left. So basically what you would have is um, six zeros and then the 25504. So what your calculator is actually trying to tell you when it has that zero there is it's trying to get the number as zero, but it's just doing a bad job of actually getting to that number accurately. So when we see the E, we automatically know that it's zero. So the X coordinate is zero and the Y coordinate is zero. And if you look where you're at on the graph, that actually makes sense for your minimum value to be at zero, zero. So that's our min. Then I went ahead and I found my last maximum, so I did left bound and right bound. And I'm gonna take my three decimals. So 1.443 because the two is followed by a nine and 2.833.